Hello friends, welcome back to India for IS Current Affairs Series. This is Manjunath Murur. Topic of this video is Critical Minerals. This Critical Minerals, this topic, it falls under GS1 paper of UPSC. Within GS1 paper, it falls under Geography. So the subject is Geography. Within Geography, the subtopic is Mineral or Research Geography. Mineral or Research Geography. So this topic, Critical Minerals, it is in news at least once in a week. And this topic, it is very important for both prelims and mains of UPSC. Both prelims and mains of UPSC. And in the last five years, at least, in the last five years, at least three to four questions came in UPSC prelims. Three to four questions came in UPSC prelims on the topic called critical minerals and rare earth elements. So this topic, it is highly important and it is one of the favorite topic of the UPSC. So far the questions have come in UPSC prelims and in this 2025 UPSC mains, the question can also come in the UPSC mains. So recently critical minerals were in news because an article published in a newspaper citing critical minerals fuel geopolitical competition. So critical minerals in the United States, geopolitical competition is a competition of which and the news are news only the editorial publisher. So the course are critical minerals news only. Now we will briefly study about the critical minerals. So in critical minerals, and you know, another definition is there. So the what defines a mineral as a critical mineral? And then our word is So coming to the definition of the critical minerals, critical minerals are those minerals which are essential for economic development and national security. So these uh, critical minerals, they are essential for economic development and national security and they possess very high supply risk. They have a very high supply risk. Why they have a risk, why they possess a very high supply risk? Because they have a limited geographical availability. That means their availability is limited to only few geographical regions or they are available, they are concentrated in few countries only. So that limits their geographical availability. And the second is concentration of extraction or processing in few countries. One do limited geographical availability, right? The second is their processing ability. Their processing is concentrated in only few countries so that's why they that's why they are <coughs> they possess high supply risk so these these two terms define the critical minerals so these are the characteristics of the critical minerals so the first one is they are essential for economic development and national security and the second thing is they possess very high supply risk because of limited geographical availability and the Concentration of processing industry in very few countries. Example, China. China processes around 70% of the world's critical minerals. Now we will look into the India's critical mineral list. So government of India, it came up with a list of minerals and declared all those minerals as critical minerals. So government of India, in Madhya Pradesh, in Madhya Pradesh, there are 30 mineral lists that are critical minerals that are declared as critical minerals. So in India, we have list of 30 critical minerals. So all those minerals can be called as a critical minerals in India. Okay. So then what are those minerals? So first category of minerals are energy transition minerals. So energy transition minerals are those minerals which require from transition from the fossil fuel or non-renewable resource to renewable resource. So we need lithium for the battery manufacturing. Cobalt, nickel. So we need lithium, cobalt, and nickel to transition from fossil fuel based or in non renewable based energy supply to renewable based energy supply. This requires for battery, nickel, and cobalt. They also require for the battery manufacturing and other solar panel manufacturing. Then, second one is electronics and semiconductor related. So, second category of minerals are electronic and semiconductor. We need silicon for in electronic industry, tin and copper in electrical and electronics industry. Then third category of minerals are fertilizer inputs. 
so we classified phosphorus and potash as critical minerals why because they are the inputs for the fertilizer industry that's why they are critical because india's agriculture it is dependent on inputs that means chemical fertilizers so chemical fertilizers so if there is no availability of the fertilizer then there will be reduction in the yield so that's why the phosphorus and potash are also included in the critical minerals then there are four fourth category of minerals that is strategic minerals strategic minerals means those minerals which have application in defense technologies and other electronic industries like bismuth titanium and rare earth elements so these are categorized as strategic minerals then fifth one heavy reliance on imports so so these are the four category of the uh, within critical minerals we have categorized the critical minerals into four categories so the next feature of the critical minerals is heavy reliance on imports india are dependent on imports for these critical minerals especially lithium cobalt nickel and rare earth elements this means india is not sufficient in production of the critical minerals that we should know this is very important here india is heavily dependent on imports for the critical minerals especially lithium cobalt nickel and rare earth elements so why critical minerals are significant coming to their significance they help in environment and energy transition for example while discussing the energy transition related critical minerals we have discussed that critical minerals find application in solar panel manufacturing they have find application in battery manufacturing this lithium ion battery so they have find application in production of energy storage devices that's why they have a very huge application and this helps in transitioning from non renewable energy resource to renewable energy resource that reduces the consumption of fossil fuel that helps in the production of environment and ecology second one national security so we have discussed critical minerals they find application in defense technology so defense technology in our new smart tv they find application in high end electronic devices high end electronic devices so all the national security in the recent operations in the, you might have heard or read in the newspaper so the warfare the operations in your it is conducted india used defense system like akash tier and s400 system so these are air defense system how this air defense system works it works on this air defense system it has radar sensors and other electronic devices and equipments so that's why from the national security perspective critical minerals are important so achieving self sufficiency in critical minerals is essential for national security then third one economic and technological relevance so economic relevance means india is under make in india program has opened the door for electronics industry so now the manufacturing of electronic items in india increasing india is becoming one of the largest manufacturer of apple iphones and other electronic devices so that contributes to the significant growth of electronics industry in india in turn which uh, this contributes to the economic development of the nation then coming to the technological relevance be it technological relevance related to super computer technological uh, development related to defense system so for all those technological interval intervents uh, for all those technological development so critical minerals are essential so these are the few significance of the critical minerals so coming to the challenges for india's critical mineral security so what are the ch- existing challenges with respect to the critical mineral security of the india so the first one is limited domestic reserves so we know that india is dependent on import of the critical minerals so there is a lo- limited domestic reserves so out of 30 minerals listed by government of india india has a very few reserves with respect to few of the minerals listed in the critical mineral list then second one technological and financial barriers in exploration yes with respect to critical minerals the exploration and uh, extraction of the critical minerals it requires 
new age technologies and a huge investment. India lacks both in technological and financial related things with respect to critical minerals. Third one, global supply chain vulnerability. So because of the limited geographical concentration and uh, extraction and processing of the critical minerals, the global supply chain of the critical minerals is uh, uh, it is very high vulnerable because most of the critical minerals are processed in China and they and their reserves is located in few South American and Central Asian and African countries. So various minerals are located in few parts of these countries. So this poses a global supply chain vulnerability. So recently what China did, it, uh, it came up with its national security law. As per the law, it restricted the export of it restricted the export of few critical minerals like lithium and other minerals to those countries which uh, which uh, in which comply with its recent law so recent law in tone bani the china so our law ge yav company compliance madutte aa company ge export madutte so this is one of the example of uh, global supply chain vulnerability then fourth point is environmental and social concerns the exploration and uh, extraction of the critical minerals is where uh, it has a significant threat to environmental environment and also social society there will be a displacement of the people then there will be contamination of water bodies which in turn affect the drinking water then air pollution which affects the life so these are the concerns then fifth one is inadequate recycling and infrastructure recycling infrastructure since the critical minerals are very critical and uh, india is dependent on the import so their recycling is very important it is highly essential but in india the recycling infrastructure itself is inadequate most of the recycling of the be it critical minerals or electronic waste or any other waste it is highly unorganized so that that recycling infrastructure it should become organized that is what required now we will go through the recent government initiatives with respect to critical minerals so critical minerals related government initiatives in the policy and legislative measures first one is mines and mineral development and regulation amendment act 2023 these amendments it paves the way for private companies private parties for the exploration of 24 listed critical minerals private sector participation in exploration of critical minerals which amendment mines and mineral development and regulation amendment act 2023 then second legislative measure is national mineral policy 2019 this mineral policy it encourages sustainable and inclusive mineral development in india then third one is union budget 2024 and 25 as per the budget 24 and 25 this budget it removed the custom duties on several critical minerals so this budget it removed the custom duty custom duty on many of the critical minerals coming to the exploration and domestic production related to critical minerals we have a geological, geological survey of india it conducts exploration of rare earth elements lithium beryllium and other critical minerals then we have strategic mineral reserve so what strategic mineral reserves do? so it plans india plans to establish india's own stockpile of lithium cobalt and other etc other critical minerals which have a strategic and high economic importance so for this we can we have example of strategic oil reserves india has a strategic oil reserves so as a part of this uh, strategic oil reserves india has stored uh, crude oil in uh, underground geological reserves on the same way india wants to develop strategic min mineral resources so these strategic mineral resources are very important to have a self sufficiency in mineral production domestic exploration and production then international collaborations so india has come up with kanij videshi india limited 
so it established Kanija Videsh India Limited. It is called as Kabil in the year 2019. It is a joint venture of Nalco and HCL and MECL. So it is joint venture of Nalco, HCL, Hindustan Copper Limited and MECL. So these are under the Ministry of Mines. Then the main objective or the mandate of this Kabil or Kanish Videsh India Limited is securing minerals from Australia, Argentina and other countries. Then India joined Mineral Security Partnership. So this Mineral Security Partnership, it is a US-led global alliance. It is a US-led global alliance which was launched in the year 2023. Sorry, India joined it in the year 2023. So its main purpose is to secure supply chains of the critical minerals. So this is all about what are critical minerals, what are their characteristics and uh, government of India effort with respect to critical minerals, be it uh, policy measures, domestic exploration and production measures and international collaborations. In the next video, we will be making a detailed video on National Critical Mineral Mission. So what is this mission, what's its objectives, so what its uh, targets and what it wants to achieve. So we will be making in detail video on National Critical Mineral Mission. So based on the topic that we have discussed so far, that is uh, critical minerals. So in the UPSC Films 2025, there was one question on critical minerals. So the question has three statements. So go through all the three statements and comment your answer. The answer and detailed explanation for this question is available in the PDF handout, which you can download by joining our Telegram channel. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Till then, happy learning.